Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to look at interest rate risk, both in terms of what it is and how companies might protect themselves from its effects. It is also worth noting that there are many crossovers between the risk management techniques described here and those discussed in the exchange rate risk presentation. Accordingly, it may be beneficial to watch that presentation first if you have not already done so. Specifically, this presentation will cover types of interest rate risk, the yield curve and how it can help companies determine their approach, internal solutions, forward rate agreements and futures and options. Let's look at each of these in turn. Types of interest rate risk. The interest rate determines the amount of interest paid on borrowings and the interest received on deposits and can therefore have a significant effect on the performance of an organisation. This presentation will focus on loans being taken out, i.e. interest being paid, However, the same principles could equally be applied to deposits. The following risks need to be considered. 1. If an existing loan has a variable or floating rate of interest, this can lead to the amount of interest paid changing throughout the period of the loan. 2. If a company is planning to take out a loan in the future, even if this is at a fixed rate, the interest rate and therefore the profit impact can change between the decision and the loan starting. 3. Interest bearing assets and liabilities may not move in line with each other. This is known as basis risk. And 4. Interest rates on assets and liabilities may change at different times. This is known as gap risk. The last two aspects are mainly relevant to banks and are not considered in detail here. However, we will now look at the first two in more detail. The yield curve and how it can help companies determine their approach. The term structure of interest rates looks at the yield on bonds and how this varies with the maturity of the bond. It is usually based on government bonds and enables companies to establish a view as to the likely movement in interest rates. As can be seen from the graph, a normal yield curve is upward sloping, indicating that loans get more expensive the longer they are. The precise shape of the curve is governed by three separate theories. One. Liquidity preference theory states that investors like to hold cash and accordingly, the longer the period they are asked to give that up, the greater the compensation they require. This explains why the curve is upwards. 2. Market segmentation theory explains that loans of different maturity are obtained from different segments of the market with different expectations. This explains why the graph is a curve rather than a straight line. And 3. Expectations theory reflects expectations as to future interest rates. This reflects the angle or slope of the line. For example, a steep sloping curve would indicate an expectation that rates will rise. Internal solutions. Companies will often adopt an approach known as smoothing in an attempt to manage the interest rate risk on current borrowing. This refers to holding an appropriate mix of fixed and variable rate debt. The fixed rate provides protection from adverse rate movements, whilst a variable rate still allows them to benefit if the rate moves in their favour. It is important to remember that risk simply refers to a variability in the possible outcomes. As such, there is an upside as well as a downside risk. 
In determining what an appropriate mix is, companies will take into account both expectations as to what future rates will be and the impact that rate movements will have. For example, if a company has relatively low levels of debt, they may be willing to use a bigger proportion of variable rate as an increase may not prove too costly. A company wishing to change the proportions may consider entering into a swap arrangement, an agreement whereby two companies pay each other's interest rate liabilities. This aspect is not covered further in this presentation. Forward rate agreements. A forward rate agreement or FRA enables a company to fix the interest rate it will pay or receive on loans it is planning to take out in the future. It is very similar in terms of what it achieves to the forward contract described in the exchange rate risk presentation. However, the mechanics as to how it achieves the outcome is very different. The major difference is that the FRA is a separate contract from the loan itself, i.e. the FRA is not a loan. An FRA fixes the rate of the loan and is shown as follows. So £10 million, 4 to 7 FRA at 6%. In this example, the interest rate on a three-month £10 million loan starting in four months' time and finishing in seven months' time at 6%. If in four months' time the rate applicable on the actual loan is higher than 6%, the company will receive compensation from the FRA equal to the actual rate minus 6%. Conversely, if the actual rate is less than 6%, the company will pay compensation. Either way, the effect is that the combination of the interest rate on the loan and the compensation paid or received on the FRA fixes the rate at 6%. Finally, it should be noted that the FRA rate refers to the base rate or LIBOR. Companies will borrow at a premium above LIBOR based on their credit rating. For instance, in the above example, a company who can borrow at LIBOR plus 1% will fix the rate at 7% being the 6% quoted in the FRA plus the 1% premium. Futures and options. Futures and options are derivative products and they work in a very similar way to that described in the exchange rate risk presentation. A future is exchange traded, which means it is only available in set contract sizes for example, blocks of £500,000, and so it may not be possible to exactly hedge the loan being taken out. A future is similar to an FRA in that it is separate from the loan it is protecting, and the process is as follows. A company plans to take out a loan in the future, and will take out that loan at the prevailing rate at that time. Separately, the company will sell interest rate futures, i.e. a commitment to pay interest in the future. When the loan starts, the company will close out the futures by buying contracts, i.e. a commitment to receive interest, simply the opposite of the original futures position. If interest rates have increased between the decision to take out the loan and the loan starting, the loan will have become more expensive than anticipated. However, if the rate has increased, the company will be receiving more interest on the futures bought than it is paying on the futures sold.
this gain on the futures offsets the loss on the loan. If interest rates decrease, the opposite happens, and the loss on the futures offsets the gain on the loan. Either way, the effective rate when the two aspects are combined is fixed. A company taking out futures will be required to deposit funds, called paying a margin, to cover any losses that may occur on the futures. The margin will also need to be topped up if losses increase, but is returned to the extent that it is not needed. An option works in exactly the same way, but with one important distinction. Under an option, the holder can decide whether or not to exercise the option. This means that if the loan cost has increased, the company will exercise the option, thereby benefiting from the gain and reducing the effective loan cost. Conversely, if the loan interest has decreased, the loss on the option will be ignored. Accordingly, an option enables the company to cap the rate of interest payable at a maximum while still being able to benefit if the rate goes down. Whilst this is obviously very attractive, options have to be purchased, i.e. a premium is paid, and this can make them expensive. Thank you.